don't you just love clouds? Not only are they really cool to look at, but they also have a huge impact on our weather and our climate. Clouds affect whether it's a sunny day, or whether it's a dreary day, or whether it's raining or not. Clouds are an important part of our everyday life, but where do they come from? And why are some clouds fluffy and white, while others are gloomy and gray? Where do rain clouds come from? Well, I'll let you in on a little known secret. Now you might remember learning about clouds and the water cycle in school. Water from the oceans evaporates up into the atmosphere where it lives as water vapor. When this water vapor cools, it condenses into cloud droplets, making a cloud. When clouds rain, the water goes back to the surface and can flow back into the ocean. But wait, there's something very important missing from this picture. We know that upon cooling, water vapor condenses into cloud droplets. But the water actually needs particles, called aerosol particles, to condense on. You may be wondering what aerosol particles are. Well, they're very small solid particles and liquid droplets that float around in our atmosphere. Even though you can't see them, they're actually all around you. They come from many natural sources, such as desert dust and sea spray as well as from human sources, such as burning fuel. What role do these aerosol particles play in cloud formation? Well, to demonstrate this idea, we are going to pretend that this delicious cupcake is an aerosol particle and that these M&Ms are water molecules. First, water molecules evaporate into the atmosphere. Notice that the water molecules in the liquid form are packed closely together, but in the air, they are at a much greater distance from each other. Now you see the problem. What will bring these water molecules back together to form a liquid droplet? How will water vapor become a cloud? Upon cooling, aerosol particles act as the magic glue that brings the water molecules together. These aerosol particles provide a place for water molecules to come together and condense into a droplet. For this reason, aerosol particles are called cloud condensation nuclei. This means that they provide a place for the cloud droplets to start forming. It might be a little hard to see how water vapor comes together on a particle to form a cloud droplet. So let's look at another example using chemistry. In this flask, we've dissolved a compound called sodium acetate. You can't see the individual molecules because they are spread out in solution, but let's see what happens when we add a tiny crystal. Isn't this cool? Here, the crystal acts as a nucleation site for the dissolved molecules to gather on and come out of solution to form a solid. This is very similar to what happens in clouds when water vapor from the atmosphere comes out of the gas phase to form a liquid droplet on the aerosol particle. Once we have a cloud droplet, water can continue to condense so that the cloud droplet will grow in size. But how does this relate to climate? Well, depending on how many aerosol particles are present in the sky, the cloud droplets will be of different sizes. Therefore, different kinds of clouds will form. Some clouds will be white fluffy clouds, while other clouds will be gloomy rain clouds. Let's go back to our cupcakes and our M&Ms. Imagine that we have 100 water molecules in the atmosphere, which are represented by these M&Ms. If we add a lot of aerosol particles, say 10, the water molecules have many options and can condense across all of the particles. They spread out evenly across all of the particles so that each cloud droplet only has a little bit of water. In this case, 100 molecules are distributed across 10 particles, meaning that each particle only has 10 water molecules. This results in many small droplets. Because the droplets are so small, they are lightweight and so they won't fall out of the sky as rain making this cloud a nice fluffy white cloud. But what if we only have a few aerosol particles available? Let's imagine that we still have 100 water molecules in the air, but now we only have four aerosol particles. How many water molecules will end up on each cloud droplet? In this case, there are fewer particles for the water to condense on, and so each droplet contains a lot of water. This results in a few large droplets, because the cloud droplets are so large, they are heavy and can fall out of the sky as rain. This makes the cloud a rain cloud.
Well, now we know that in addition to water molecules, aerosol particles are the secret ingredient to making cloud droplets. These particles have a big effect on our climate because without them, we wouldn't have clouds or rain. So these super small particles, even though you can't see them, have a huge impact on our planet. But excessive air pollution causes an increase in the number of particles, leading to smaller cloud droplets and therefore less rain or drought. I don't know about you, but I have a whole new appreciation for aerosol particles. 